Frizzy, I mean, the ink isn't even dry on this deal with UBS and Credit Suisse. Why is this happening so quickly? So we had heard rumors that actually they were looking for someone, an old pair of hands that knows exactly what they're doing. Sergio Ramadi has been considered maybe one of the most talented bankers of his generation. He knows UBS intimately. He was chief executive there for nine years. And actually the task of putting these two huge, systemically important banks together and selling off Credit Suisse, you know, very fast in terms of what they want to keep in terms of strategy is not something that's going to be easily done. And so I think that the, the way they decided less than two weeks after the this merger, um, you know, happened or was announced is that they want to make sure that they get the strategy right. They, I guess, recognize, and maybe this comes from the chairman, how big the task is. And Sir Dermati knows UBS intimately. And because Credit Suisse was his biggest rival, mm -hmm. maybe also he has insight into how to unwind parts of the investment bank that will be the hardest. Talk to me about that unwinding. How aggressive is that going to be? So look, what we know, Danny, in terms of strategy, so first of all, this is a good deal for UBS, right? You get Credit Suisse, and I think the number that's key, and Paul Davies also makes this argument in his opinion piece, is tangible book value. It went up by 74% after the deal was announced. This means that they're going to sit on a lot of assets that they can decide to deploy or use. If you look at the main three things that we need to try and figure out is what do they do with leverage finance, what do they do with some of the markets, the Swiss bank is, is kind of, you know, something in itself, but it's really the investment bank. A lot of the risky stuff is here in the UK. What do they do with it? How much litigation and liabilities has in that? So that's probably going to be one of the things that we want to watch out for the most. That's so fascinating because Credit Suisse was known as sort of the leveraged financing house. What happens when UBS takes that on? Is that the biggest challenge? Is, is there, or are there some of the roadblocks that UBS has ahead of them in terms of this integration? So, let me, so the, the easiest part is probably wealth management. We know Iqbal Khan also went to Asia to already try and retain talent. They have to cut costs. So the, the most difficult thing is actually cutting costs to a level where they're happy with. Remember, if you look at UBS and the share price, this was a perfectly fine bank. They were giving back to shareholders through dividends and share, and share buybacks. So as they split off some of the things of Credit Suisse that they don't want, and we may find that they keep some which could be surprising maybe for the markets they, they need to preserve what UBS was mm -hmm. so confident giving back to shareholders and making sure that it doesn't really dilute any of the strength of the bank originally.